Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Rocky Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it is the first game of a brand new season. The Duxbury Dragons coming all the way up Route 3 and 24 to face your Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson, Brian Madden. Guys, we'll get to the finer details a little bit later on, but... It's a whole new format this year. The Big Three does not exist. There are no divisions, the Catholic Conference included. You have to make the max preps power rankings in the top 20 teams to get into the playoffs, and that'll be something different for Brockton to have to get through other than beating up on Durfee and New Bedford. Yeah, that'll be very interesting this year with the new format. MIAA has, uh, has um, initiated. But... Um, Coach Colombo said it's going to be a stack with town. Yeah, Coach Colombo says they're uh, stacked with talent this year, and they've got um, some skill positions in the quarterback and receivers. Um, their defense is solid as it was last year, so um, it, things are looking up, hopefully, for the boxers. Hey, Brian, that evidence the defense is strong by two of your four captains are coming from the defensive side and for the first time in recent memory the starting quarterback is not one of the four elected captains yeah like you said um, um before we were on mic that you haven't seen that before and i, I haven't either as far as a, a quarterback not being a captain the other factor guys is that at some point we will be joined by our friend dorian who is racing up the coast from carolina it's already windy. It's going to get rainy and kind of nasty out probably somewhere around the end of the first quarter. How do you think weather factors into this one? Um, weather might, if the wind starts blowing, weather might be a factor because Coach Colombo said during the summer that it looks like he could have more passing this year by his offense because his junior quarterback, Devontae Melody, is a very accurate passer. So, and he can also run. That he's, Coach Colombo says he's probably the second best runner on the offensive team. So he'll, he's going to be exciting to watch this year. Well, Duxbury winning the opening toss. They have elected to receive. So Brockton will have the first possession in that rainy, nasty second half. Uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But Brockton's offense, they lost a lot of starters. But they do have returning wide out Isaiah Laguerre is a senior this year, six foot, a buck 90, and he showed flashes of greatness last year. Yeah, yeah you're right, the offensive, the offense is kind of new, especially the offensive line. It was all seniors last year, and so they've got juniors coming, coming on board this year, but Coach Colombo has a lot of confidence in them. The ball will be kicked away by number two, Amik Watterson which is interesting, Brian, because last year he was their starting running back, and now he's lining up as the kicker. Well, um, you know, in the words of Bill Belichick, you need to be versatile if you want to play. So you need to be able to wear many hats. So let's see how he is as a kicker. Watterson, of course, getting into some disciplinary issues last year forced him to miss three total games out of last season. And he boots it away, falling at the 15-yard line, and that's where Duxbury has it. Finding a hole is the Duxbury returner, and brought down very nicely. It was number zero, Will Prouty, on the return for the Dragons. Yeah, that was a nice hole opened up for um, the Duxbury returner. Duxbury did a nice job making some key blocks there to give Duxbury a nice field position to start this season. And Adrian Pelle, um, nice stop. You know, he, he stopped him from getting another 10 yards at least. So yeah, because he, if he didn't stop him, yeah. he was going, he was going, he was going he, into uh, boxer territory. Going into boxer territory. He's going to get at least to the 50. Trips to the far side. One lone wide out to the near sideline and in the shotgun is the Duxbury quarterback. It's gonna be a quarterback keeper right at the middle, a gain of about two. And that was Will Prouty again. Yeah, nice stop, nice stop by Sean O'Brien for a short gain of just two, like you said. Second and eight to go. Prouty listed as a wide receiver in the shotgun yet again. 
the handoff to number 25. Right up the middle, it's a gain of about four on that play. Number 21, rather. That is Tim Landolfo. Yeah, that Duxbury offensive line, a good size um, line that they have here. Third down and short. Third and uh, about three to go. Another handoff to Lindoffel. He is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Might have fallen forward for a gain of a yard. It will be fourth and short. Yeah, they're going to be a yard short. They're in boxer territory, and they're going to go for it. Prouty lining up under center, and a timeout's going to be called on the boxer sideline. Yeah, I think that surprised the uh, boxer coaching staff that um, Duxbury lined up quickly, they only needed a yard. I mean, a quarterback sneak would, would get that first down. Yes, yes. And again, so far, Duxbury's offensive line has made some decent holes for this um, Duxbury backfield. Well, right. What's interesting, Brian, is we've seen uh, Will Prouty lining up at quarterback. There are five quarterbacks listed on the Duxbury roster. He is not one of them, and we have not seen one yet on their first drive of this game. Well, you know, I was, I was um, talking to the Duxbury coach at the beginning, and I said, who should we watch? He said, number zero, Prouty. He says, if he goes down, we're done. So that's wow. the words of their coach. So, and, you know, I'm looking at their um, numbers last year, and Prouty's um, all-purpose yards, 1,110, you know, 92 yards a game, so um, he's a beast. And that was as a junior. Now he's a senior, so he's even, uh, you know, honed his skills even more. Yeah, he's got some height, he's 6'1". Now he backs up into the shotgun, trips to the far side. The handoff to Lindolfo, he's gonna be stopped and the boxers are gonna take down on a big turnover on Downs. Well, well, they, right there, the coaching staff did the right thing by calling that timeout so they could get the defense ready for whatever um, Duxbury was gonna throw at them, and they were ready. They were ready, and, and Sean O'Brien, and also number 77. Will take uh, over for the at the Who was that? Line. Nazir, or more. Obama, whichever way. Well, here, I'm gonna be butchering names Same all the <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at these names, I said, oh God. Um, Miles, we've been butchering it's, it's, names It's going to take time. the whole se yes. whole year to get these names right. Yes, yes, but that's okay. You guys know who we're talking about. Yep. First and 10 for the boxers from their own 46-yard line. The pitch is to Amik Watterson. He's running into trouble, and he's tripped up in the backfield. It's a big loss of about eight. Yeah, that did not fool the uh, Duxbury defense. It was about three or four defenders waiting for uh, the running back. Yeah, that option play was dead from, from the beginning. And Meek tried to change direction and come back and lost another yard. But it's early. Devontae Medley, game. the undersized quarterback of the Brockton Boxers, 5'8", only a buck 65. He is a junior, and now he is lined up in the gun with trips to the near side, quarterback keeper. Medley gets hit and he's brought down at the 40. It's a gain of about two. It will be third and about 16. And we have an injured dragon on the field. Yeah, Devont Devontae Medley put his head down with no fear and ran right into the, um, the man that is down, number 32. Tim O'Neill. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're 5'8", 100 plus pounds, you gotta be tough. We'll see it here on a replay. Devontae just puts his head down. He caught him with the shoulder pad. And immediately showing signs was number 32, Tim O'Neill, the junior linebacker. It appears like a lower extremity is, it appears like a uh, lower extremity is hurt, so looks like it's his uh, left like leg. Oh, he's in a lot of pain. He's pounding the ground with his hand. 
They're might have twisted knee might, area. Yeah, tw might have twisted his knee. And let's just hope it's just a twist. When you see a player fold like that, the first thing you think of is ACL. Yeah. Yeah. And now Jerry Connor bringing the card out. So an unfortunate situation as Tim O'Neill of the Duxbury Dragons is going to be carted off. So we've got an injury timeout, 9.42 to go in the first quarter. It is third and 16 for the boxers when we resume. And it is a silent Marciano Stadium. Tim O'Neill getting up and he will be helped to the cart. And in a good show of sportsmanship, Teddy Massing him of the boxers going over and tapping his shoulder pads. <laughs> well, you hate to see that. You feel bad for the Duxbury player on his second play of the defense there, and uh, he goes down. Well, I just want to mention that Duxbury had a pretty good season last year. They were overall 12 and run one, uh, five wins at home, four games, four away, and um, three at neutral. Neutral uh, fields and one loss. Well, see, that, that's the thing about the boxes, Coach Colombo. You know, they're not afraid to play anybody. I mean, you know, that, that takes a lot to go take on a team that was 12 and 1 last year and say, yeah, we'll play them. That's right. Because they beat um, Bridgewater Rainham 40 to 14. Wow. Their only loss was to um, Tewksbury Memorial. Wow. And that was a close game, 29 21. So, they're pretty good. Back underway, and Devontae Medley in the shotgun. Two wideouts split to each side. Medley gonna throw. And it's tip, almost intercepted off the fingertips. I believe that was number 23 on the far sideline, Mike Cicerone. Good defense there by number 10. What was that? Uh, Seamus Johnston. Seamus is a senior quarterback and as well as a defensive back. Yeah, good coverage on the play. Now a punt is going to take a good Brockton bounce all the way down to the 18 yard line where it will stop. Duxbury will start their second possession on their own 18 yard line, first down. So two drives, one for each team, two three and outs. Well, one thing about this Brockton defense in this 2019 season, they're an experienced defense. They didn't lose many players on the defensive side and basically that's what held Brockton um, boxes last year with their season they had a good defense so we really expect coach Columbo expects big things from this defense this year 9-10 to go in the first quarter <laughs> Duxbury beginning its second drive of the game Prouty in the shotgun trips to the far side Prouty's going to throw and almost picked off trying to jump the route was number 12 of the boxers, Devin Fortes. Yeah, and he almost had that. Yeah, Devin's one of the leaders back there. He's a senior. And he was looking at six if yes. he got his hands around that. Pass complete first down for the Dragons, their first of the game. Prouty loses it. And he is going to fall on it. Be a loss of about five. Yeah, Duxbury was very lucky to recover that football because he was lucky because there was no 
Brockton High players in there yet. Yes. Because if there was just one player in there, they could have fell on that football. But he had good protection. Gave him a chance to cover the uh, fumble. Wind picking up quite a bit here at Marciano Stadium. Man in motion, Prouty drops back to pass. A hurry pass is complete to Landolfo, who is across the 40 to the 42. That'll be another Duckberry first down. Yeah, that was very, um, very nice play. Developed nicely. Good tackle by Horn, by Johnny. Duxbury using that quick offense. Trips to the near side. Prouty hands off to Lindolfo, who's going to be hit at the line and falling forward a gain of about one. Yeah, Gio Brown was um, in on the tackle very quickly. Stopped him from making a big gain. Quarterback keeper for Prouty is going to get to the 48. That will be third and about five. Third down. This be a good spot for a stop right here. Get the ball back. You can see Duxbury's trying to make the Brockton defensive line jump by calling out a long count, I mean a short count. Quarterback keeper, Prouty is going to be stopped, it looks like, just short. It'll be another fourth and one. Looks like it's going to be short, fourth down. And Coach Colombo's too, you know, he's gonna instill in his guys to um, be prepared for that um, quick, you know, the jumping, uh, jumping the count. Quarterback keeper Prouty gets across the line and it'll be a first down for the Dragons. And that was a smart call to, um, you know, go on a fourth down with about a yard to go. Yeah, just let the quarterback run it. That's right. The last time they tried to give it to the running back and got stopped. Yeah, because Brockton is always a threat to um, put up some points quickly. off to Lindolfo trying to split to the inside spins off a couple of tackles and turns what could have been a four or five yard loss into about a four yard gain. Yeah that, that second tackler Fortes he went for the football and um, the running back shedded that tackle and which enabled him to get uh, five yard four four yards on the carry. in the gun, fakes the handoff, screen pass complete, and finding a hole is number nine, tripped up by the shoelaces, was Ryan Prudente. Yeah, another play developed very nicely for the Duxbury Dragons. And they're starting to move the sticks pretty easily. So, Rockton's defense needs to stiffen up a little bit as they get closer to the uh, red zone. Looking for the end zone is going to overthrow his intended receiver that was Prudente again on the outside. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, a lot of pressure by the defense coming in on the quarterback. I believe he threw that maybe a second or two before he really wanted to. But it was good coverage anyway. Yeah. Um, 19 was there. Uh, Isaiah Jackson. 
Th think about it. It was good coverage. If he had a second to, he would have maybe um, Isaiah could have took that away. This is true. Throw oh! It's intercepted by number 15 of the boxers. And getting all the way back to the Duxbury 30 yard line was Rodrigo Lima. And what a catch. It bounced, tipped off of his left hand. He was able to hold on as he was spinning around. Yeah, here it is right here. And here you see the uh, instant replay. Good. The, um, Good balance. Good balance, yeah, what, yeah. What a crap. It and, was. And, and this is the experience Coach Colombo was talking about on defense. He was here last year, and uh, he just made a great play with one hand. But I'll tell you, Navon Reed, Navon Reed mm -hmm. was very instrumental in, in, in forcing him to throw that prematurely. And, with with uh, the rush. Yeah, with yeah. the rush. So a golden opportunity here for the boxers. First and 10 from the Duxbury 30-yard line. And that's an excellent stop for the defense because, Brian, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Duxbury had started to move the sticks very easily down the field. Watterson ahead for a gain of about two, second and eight. Well, you know what they say, you live by the pass, sometimes you die by the pass. Yes, and <laughs> Brockton's got great field position. They're at the 27-yard line, 28-yard line, and um, still a lot of time left. I can't see the clock. 4-10 yeah. left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, and you're, and you're right, uh, Brian, defensive, Navon Reed playing defensive end, he's 6-4. Low snap handled by Medley, picked up. He's going to dive ahead and get to the 24-yard line. It'll be third and about four. Yeah, it was good balancing by the quarterback. Yeah, he's able to pick up about three, four yards on that broken play because the ball was on the ground. He picked it up and... Um, was able to scurry, scurry ahead for about four yards. Three and a half to go in the first quarter. Third and four for the boxers. Meek Watterson lined up to Medley's left. Avon Reed the lone wide out to the near sideline. Medley pitches out to Watterson. Watterson will get to the 23-ish. It'll be fourth and a couple. That was a big play, defensive play by Duxbury. I mean, it isn't like it's fourth and one. It's about fourth and three at least. And Joey Graham was able to stop him from um, getting that first, round, first down. Coach Colombo is sticking with that option play. Yeah. You know, it can, it can work like knife through hot butter. Right, he, he's sticking with it because his quarterback, it can be electrifying. He can run it or he can pass it. Bradley drops back to pass it. Oh, it's it's going to be intercepted by the Dragons and brought down at the 49 of the Boxers. Tim Landolfo on the interception. And I think there, that, that was a height problem. Quarterback really couldn't see. You can see right here. He jumped up high. Nice play. Oh, he went up. Well, he, yeah, went he went way went up. up to get that. He sure did. And that's what you got to do when you're rushing that quarterback. You just can't stay on, keep your feet on the ground. If you know he's going to throw it, jump up in the air and, and put them hands up. That's right. And if it wasn't for Amik Watterson, he'd still be running. Yep. First to 10, Duxbury have too many men on the field, but they're gonna call a timeout to prevent the flag. Yeah, we still got two minutes and 25 seconds left in this somewhat exciting first quarter. It has been, hasn't it? Yes, <laughs> even though there's no score, it has been exciting. We've got turnovers on both teams, um, interceptions. By the linebackers. Great defense and offensive plays. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good game. Speaking of linebackers, Duxbury linebacker Tim O'Neill has not left the cart, so one would assume he is done for the evening. An unfortunate situation.
unfortunately, that's part of football. Yeah. Five wideouts for the Dragons, and finally a quarterback in. That quarterback, and he makes the nice lofty pass, and it's going to be a touchdown for the Dragons. Tim Landolfo complete from Matt Festa. The freshman quarterback, 6'2", buck 70, feathering it in there, and that was a nice 25-yard pass by Festa. Yeah. And, and what made that play, you'll see it right here. He had all the time in the world. Defense couldn't get in there to get him. He stayed right in the pocket, had time. Man got open. The rest is history. Yeah, and he was off to the races, and uh, no one's going to catch him. And, and I'm surprised he shouldn't have been that wide open. That's the boxers sticking to the zone coverage. The extra point is up and good. So, 7 nothing, Duxbury over Brockton. 2.14 left to go in the first quarter. That was a nice kick by Brett Souza. Yeah, because it wasn't a good snap. No. The, um, the holder did a nice job getting it and then putting it down for the um, kicker. Well, Brockton's going to have to regroup re uh, and rebound. Here's the replay. And you'll see the snap. Nice job by the holder, the Greg. That wasn't a straight snap. No, the, the holder had to go to his right. Yeah, it was, it was a little, was little bit to his side. side. Yeah, it yeah. was to his side. He was able to catch it and bring it back down in front of him, put it down. Kicker made a good kick. Meek Waters and Isaiah Laguerre back to return for the boxers. Well, Duxbury was, was able to capitalize on, on the turnover. Brockton could not capitalize on theirs early on in this football game. Brett Souza to kick it away. High end over end. It'll be taken by Waterson at the 14 yard line. Nick Watterson finding a hole, breaking a couple tackles, is across the 50, still on his feet to the 40, all the way to the 37. What a return by Amik Watterson. Oh, fantastic run by Watterson. If it wasn't for Jack Murphy, yeah. he was going. He's Onto gone. The house. Yep. Here you see it right here. And he's really kind of tiptoeing and just finding his way. Yep. And right here, he breaks through, and then he turns up the speed. And then you see two coming up on the side. He tries to smush him. Yeah. Stiff on him and throw him down to the ground, but um, uh, who was it? Murphy was having none of that. Great run. Medley back to pass. High lofty pass, looking for the boxer wide out and the fans calling for it. That's the interference. They're not going to get it. That was intended for the big wide out, Navon Reed. And I, I like the play call. Yeah, me too. Me too. Navon has good hands and he's a big target. And I think had he stopped jockeying for position and just run, he might have um, been able to be in right position to catch that ball on the fly. Watterson lined up in the slot now, Medley in the shotgun. Handoff to Isaiah Laguerre. No, it's a quarterback keeper for Medley who is tripped up by his ankle to the 25. It's good for a boxer first down. And that trip up um, stopped the touchdown because he was gone. Yeah, number 15, um, Sam Heppenstall. But Medley was, uh, that was a nice fake. Now looking over the middle and a little bit overthrown. Yeah, he led him up just a little bit too much. Yeah, yeah. Medley really had to get rid of that in a hurry because they were pressuring Dragons. Yeah, and there were two receivers in the same area. And he threw it right between both of them. Five wideouts, Medley in the shotgun. Isaiah Laguerre, the man in motion. 
he will get the handoff. We'll get it to the outside, spinning all the way down to the 15 yard line. It is right at the first down marker and they will give the boxers a fresh set of downs. And what made that play, defense was concentrating on that quarterback. Yeah. And the yes. option worked to the, to, the, to the point right there. They were worried about the quarterback and which freed up the, the running back to get some big yardage. Yeah, Brockton has numerous threats. Um, this is the first game of the season, but you know we've already seen some outstanding play by um, Watterson, Medley, as well as Legary. Here you see the replay. Hands it off and breaks through the hole and taken down by, uh, was that number 15? Yeah, you could see just for a split second there when the quarterback was giving it to the Given to halfback, they weren't sure, and they didn't want the quarterback. They know the quarterback's a threat, and just that split second opened up the um, the lane for the uh, for the running back. Yes, Isaiah Laguerre, part of a very athletically gifted family, the first cousin of Haitian Olympic runner Vanessa wow. Clairvaux. Wow. Oh. Mad Dog, you're just full of information this, this, today. You gotta be, you gotta be. <laughs> Medley back to pass, he's in trouble, splitting to the outside, turning upfield, loses it, and oh, Duxbury's gonna recover as it was oh, they're gonna falling give it to out him. of bounds, and Duxbury is taking over on the fumble, they were able to grab it in bounds. Just can't make those type of mistakes when you're in the red zone. No, here you see it right here. Oh, look at the way he's carrying the ball. Yeah, yeah, you can't carry the ball like that. No, you can't carry the ball like exact. Whoa, that was close. That is close. That was very close. Because it looks like, like his body it looks was, like his body landed on the line. It was out of bounds. The ball was seemed like it was on the line, but his body, when he recovered, was out of bounds. Coach, throw the challenge flag. Oh, there's no calls, no, no challenge flag in high school. By the way, uh -huh. for the for the first challenge of the NFL season, for the pass interference, the new big rule this year, that was a very lackluster play for the Green Bay Packers to challenge on. I fell asleep. A lot of people was, did watching that game. It was kind of, yeah. yeah. Let's oh, see here, this again. One more time. And he's see, and You're he better, he's going to protect right the ball. There. He's going to protect the ball a little better. All right, so. He, no, he's, he, not, he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds. He doesn't have control of the ball before he lands on the um, on the sideline. Oh, uh, that was a tough tough break for the boxes there. Great replay there by uh, um, Booth down at the booth. Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the Caught views of Brockton. Yeah, but it was good job. Good job. Trip to the near side, and you can already see a defensive breakdown on the near side in the zone coverage. Duxbury is going to run it. Lining up at quarterback again was Festa. Great job, Kill is Angie and Alexis at the, the very top. And that was a missed opportunity by Brockton. Yeah. I mean, it, it was so close. They were in the red zone, threatening to score, tie the game up. 40 seconds to go now in the first quarter. They hand off to Landolfel, powering up ahead, and he's brought down after a gain of about six. And I'm sure once the coaches review the uh, game, they're gonna let let the quarterback know you can't carry the ball like Mike Vick. Yeah. Because you only, ain't. <laughs> the only person that can carry the ball like Mike Vick was Mike and Vick. Mike Vick, yeah. <laughs> And he lost the ball a few times yeah. doing that same yeah, thing. Yeah, doing that same thing. Unless you got them big, big hands that wrap around that football like you had no business carrying the ball like that. Cunningham used to carry it like Cut, that too. Yes. He used to carry it like that too. Randall Cunningham yeah. for the Philadelphia Eagles. We have reached the end of the first quarter. It is seven to nothing, Duxbury over Brockton. Off a long pass. Matt Festa to Tim Landolfo. That is the only score so far in this game. Guys, it could turn out to be a defensive battle, especially once our friend Dorian comes to visit. Yeah, well, Dorian's, Dorian's still got a ways to get. 
before he gets here. Well, I'm sure Duxbury will punt the football. I mean, they've got, they're deep in um, their own territory. They don't want to take a chance. Fourth and two. And hopefully boxes can maybe get a great punt return and uh, get back in the end zone. Well, get their first score for the 2019 season. Fourth and four deep in their own territory for the Duxbury Dragons. And look who's kicking, Prouty. The 6'1", 175 wide receiver. He does it all. Ooh, nice kick. It's nice a good kick. kick. <laughs> this kid does do it all. Taken by number 25, who was written down at the 41, only a return of three yards. Johnny Horn. First to ten for the boxers from their own 41 yard line. High snap. Medley's going to screen pass it over to Amik Watterson who loses it and Duxbury takes over again. Wow. Heppen's throw in the right place at the right time and here you see the replay. And Watterson is protecting the ball. Oh. Stripped. Number 10. Stripped it. Good job by um, Seamus Johnson. Stripped, Stripped that it. ball right out of his hands. And uh, it's a good defensive play. That's it. Oh, I've been corrected in my pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, get ready, Paul, because there's going to be a whole lot of that this year. <laughs> well, so, so the story becomes four offensive drives for the boxers. Three have ended in turnovers. Yes. Yes. And, and one score out of those three turnovers. Festa back to pass, high rainbow pass. It will fall incomplete. Number 34 in coverage for the boxers, Markendi Souffron. Boy, that was kind of up for grabs. As far as um, pass. Or pass interference. Because it was kind of yeah, there's a, a lot of, bu of bumping and little stuff. Bump and little bumping, little contact before um, while the ball was in the air. No call. Whistle stayed in the pocket. So the boxers are living and dying by zone coverage today. Oh, he wasn't ready for it. Festa able to recover, splits to the inside, pitches now. It will he fall incomplete, you but was he across the across line? Across the line, that should have been a penalty. Pitch that. Because the ball's on the 49. Gee, let's Here's see a look it. at the replay. Where was he when he pitched it? Yeah, he was not ready. But that almost looked like he was over the line. No, oh, no, he, he was, he was, he was okay. at the 48. He was, uh, he was okay. yeah, a yard and a half. Good pressure by the boxers. Third and 10. Festa back to pass over the middle. And nice play. Excellent coverage by number 12, Devin Fortes. Yeah, Fortes got his arm in there. Just in time. That's it. Got up and made the incomplete, sign, incomplete pass. Motion with his arms. And there you see it on the replay. Yeah, nice play. Good job by Forte. 
Johnny Horn back to return the punt. Fourth and 10 for the Dragons. Will Prouty back to kick. Timeout, Brockton. Brockton's going to call a timeout. So Brockton needs to um, have a drive with uh, no mistakes. Every drive has ended up in a turnover, I believe. I don't think they punted the football. They just gave it up on a turnover. Yeah. yeah. They've got one punt. They've got two fumbles and one interception. One interception. Okay. Eleven sixteen left in the first half. Seven nothing. Duxbury over the boxers. Prouty on the kick. Might have been tipped. It spiraling. And it might get to the end zone. There's no way they got that. Should be a one. touchback. That was a touchback. No, you know, the yes. ref, refs are not going to give Yeah, it was a touchback. Okay, good. They are going to give call. him a touchback. Yeah. Because it, the guy. It was an excellent attempt. attempt it was. Hit, but his body was in the end zone. And the ball was in the end zone. Okay. Here you're going to see it right here. Nice kick by Prouty. Yeah. This kid does it all. You can't ask for a better kick than that. Yes. Then they get the 20 and look, he's right it. there, right there. And right there. In the, yeah. end, zone. In the end zone. Yeah. Scooped it from the end zone. If he had another half a step, yeah. that's at the one. Yes. And that would have that would, that would not been good. What's the referees having a discussion? They got to know that there's a monitor right here with clear as day that that ball went across the goal line. No, you didn't. How, wait, the, the, the referee that has the football called the play and he had the angle. How are they going to? They're going to mark it at the unbelievable. They're uh, going to mark it at the one. I don't believe that. Can we take another look at that? Yeah, he was definitely in the end zone. And the referee that just put the ball down, he had the, the best angle. angle. Yes. Are you going to see the ball? I don't, I don't see any other referees. Right there. And it's, it's over the line. And the referee out of your picture on the right made the call. I don't see any other referees. Right and there. and the, the other referee came down. came down and he changed the call. Uh, terrible call there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tough break for the That's the second tough break for the boxers on these um, calls here. Yeah, that's two bad calls by yeah. the referees. Don't have me go Tommy Heinsohn on these people. <laughs> go. God. Unbelievable. Let's break for a quick injury update. Tim O'Neill has been loaded into an ambulance that has left the campus of Brockton High School. So I'm sure everybody's thoughts are with the young linebacker from Duxbury High School. And I'm sure Coach Colombo is livid. And I'm sure he's oh, saying the same call. thing. Yeah. We saw it off the angle that yes. there was yes. screen between ball and the white goal line. And the one referee that could make the call made the call, and the other referees want to reverse Override it. Override it. Override it. So now Brockton's going to be careful. They're really handcuffed here. Yeah. They make one wrong move, which they've already made a few early well, in this game. In this situation, if they can get a first down and then try and, you know, get out of this horrible situation they're in, then great. If not, they just need to protect the ball, yeah. try and get four or five yards, give the punter a little bit of room, and um, then try and let their defense hold up. Yeah, you said the key word, Brian. They must protect the football right now. That's right. Because the way the scoring is going, it's going to be a low-scoring game. And um, you don't want to give uh, Duxbury a 14-point lead. Medley in a shotgun back to pass, looking over the middle. And it's Ooh. almost intercepted. Isaiah Laguerre had to break that one up defensively. If he could have got that ball a little bit deeper. Yeah. If he had put a little bit more air under it, yeah. then Laguerre might have been able to catch that in stride. But it was a little short. See on the replay. 
Dempsey right there. He had come. It's too short. Yeah. If he would have aired it out, his receiver could have come under it, and he would have been off to the races. And Seamus Johnson uh, wasn't able to bring that in. What was his name? Seamus. Seamus. Not Seamus. I know all the Itali um, Irish people out there saying, It's Seamus! <laughs> it's Seamus, you idiot! <laughs> Medley back to pass, looking to the near sideline, overthrowing Navon Reed. And that'll bring up a fourth and ten from the one-yard line. Yeah, Nav Navin Navon Reed was not quite ready. Just as he turned, the ball was coming at him. So he didn't have time to adjust to where the pass was. Now, if you're Duxbury, why not go for it? Try to block the punt. Yeah. I'm sure they probably will. Oh, great Short field position. Punt. Falling at the 35. A flag thrown behind Ho the play. It's, hopefully it's clipping. Yeah, block in the back, actually. the first flag of the game. Let's see what the call is going to be. It is going to be against Duxbury. It's going to be holding, holding. against the Dragons. So that's a break there for the boxes now. They got a hold. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Giving the boxers just a little bit more breathing room. Still great field position to start for the Dragons. Matt Festa in at quarterback. On the far sideline is Will Prouty. Yeah, Prouty's got a height advantage on the defender. I can't see his number. The handoff to Lindolfo. Up ahead for a gain of about three yards. Boxes need to hold these guys. Don't let them get a first down. Sean O'Brien and Gio Brown. Festa in the gun. Loses it, Landolfo oh, falls on it. It's been a lot of that today, especially because there hasn't been any rain yet. With a slippery ball, you kind of expect it, but I, you know, first game point, of the season, yeah. you know, I I don't expect it to rain until at least ten o'clock. I hope I you're right. I hope you're right. Yeah. I think we'll be good. I don't see it raining too early. It doesn't. Even, I mean, it's a little cloudy, but I think we'll be good. Festa in trouble, he's yes. gonna be sacked at the 44 yard line. Juan Odi. Good job. Yeah, that, that was a blitz. You'll see him coming over there from the right side of the defense. Comes Un right in. Untouched. And ball almost, almost came free. He almost lost that ball. You could yeah. see it get bobbled a little bit there. Achi Winodi on the sack. Yeah, Winodi, he's a senior. He's part of that senior experience in that defensive um, linebacker position. Nice call by the defensive coordinator for the boxes. Fourth and a long way to go. 20 yards to go for Duxbury. They will punt it away. Uh, Johnny Horn back to receive. Delay a game. Delay a game on the Dragons. Dragons. Back them up even more. <laughs> that might have been intentional. That might have been those, we oh. know we can kick it 45 yards, so oh, let's back okay. it up, yep. give them a little bit more room on the other end. Trying to get that same type of situation. Oh, he shanked it. This one a high it. spiraling kick. It'll take a Duxbury yeah. bounce and be touched down 
at the 14-yard line. And the Johnny Horn did the right thing. Don't even go anywhere near that ball bouncing around on the, on the ground. Decent field position for Brockton. Under the circumstances, they could have been backed up more than um, at the 14-yard line. We're not getting rain, but we sure are getting wind. Yeah. It's a nice breeze coming in from the east. Medley in the gun. It's going to be a quarterback keeper in using he, his he, small stature to his advantage, ducking in and out of tackles there. He almost got out of that situation. And how he made any yards on that, yes. because he was, he was um, stopped behind the line of scrimmage. You'll see right here. First contact right there at the line of scrimmage, and he's able to pick up about four he yards. He kind of tripped up there. Yeah. If he could have kept his balance. Nice. First down. Ooh. Nice effort there. Who's that, Watterson? Yeah, that was Watterson. To get the first, get the first down. And it was almost a broken play because yeah. the ball was was um, hiked high. Yeah. He had to, you know, he had to go up and get it. Medley had to go up and get it. You see it here. High yes. snap. Yep. Gets it off to Watterson and Watterson, and then he just powers from right uh, there yes. for about for about five yards. Exactly. Well, maybe about three, four. But anyway, he got a first down. Five wideouts, clean backfield for Devontae Medley. Another high snap. Now back to pass. He's going to find Dameek Watterson at the 39. That Watterson nice didn't think he was down. That was a nice tackle. It was a nice tackle. Good job by 22. Uh, Campbell Peng. Watterson, the powerful back. Second year boxer moving up from Tennessee. You see Tennessee. it right here. And he's wide open. Nice cut. Yeah. He now goes back to the pass air. again. Almost a phenomenal catch by number 13, Trey Shula Hall. Yeah, that was almost a pretty good catch. I mean, he got turned around, tried to just bring it in with one hand and wasn't able to, to keep control of it. And... Uh, yeah, it was a little bit too far out to the left. Yeah, Trey had a few words for uh, Medley on that one. Five wideouts, another clean backfield for Medley. Back to pass, low screen pass to Isaiah Laguerre who is still fighting and he'll get the first down. Excellent battle by Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, nice. excellent effort. Nice second effort like you said, Yeah, Miles. nice second effort. Because he got, he got stopped at about the, after gaining about five yards or four yards and then he just used his strength and kept his right legs there. churning. See, look at his legs go. Yeah. Picked up an additional four yards. Same formation, Medley back to pass, complete to Laguerre at the 45. And They're gonna Coach spot Colombo it at the was 44. right. Coach Colombo was right. He said this is gonna be a passing team. And Medley's doing an outstanding job, um, you know, right now in the second quarter, as far as uh, accuracy and hitting the, the open receiver. First, uh, second and about five for the boxers from the 44 yard line. 5.15 left to go in the first half. Brockton will have possession to open the second half. Medley starting to get into a groove. Isaiah Laguerre, the man in motion. Quarterback keeper for Medley is gonna be hit and sacked at the 49 of the boxers. Yeah, yeah they tried to The twist. refs are gonna be very generous with this spot, saying yeah. that he was across the line of scrimmage before he was knocked back. And they're gonna spot it at the 47. 
Yeah, McLean Dunlap, he tried to break him. Yeah, he tried to twist him like a pretzel. Yeah, then he picked him up, pat him on his head like a puppy. Yeah, you can see right here, number 55. It's like, yo. It's yeah. an interesting forward progress call. Yeah. It's normally on a quarterback keeper, it's anything goes. Five wideouts, clean backfield for Medley. It's a big third down. Medley nice. was under pressure, and it's going to be a first down. The big Navon Reed on that reception. Yeah, Navon, he's got some big hands, so he takes that football and puts it right in, as you'll see it right here on the replay. And Medley was crunched as he threw that ball. You guys said it. That was a big third down conversion for the big. boxers. That was big. No change in formation for the boxers. Medley back to pass. He throws a rainbow. And Reed comes down with it. Is it going to be gonna a give catch? It to him? No. They're saying he was out of bounds. Let's see here on the replay, did he? Yeah, he was out. He was out. First good call by the referees. Three minutes, 34 seconds left in this half. Medley in the gun. Screen pass to Laguerre. He's got a man to beat trying to turn the corner to the 30. Just hold on to the ball. I'm going to bring up a third and short for the boxers. Another big third down situation for the boxers. They one must, one they, thing we haven't seen yet, normally the boxers bread and butter, the inside run. It's, it's not going to happen this year. The, you know, they got, like, like Brian said, they got the option and they're a passing team this year. They don't have that big back. But you go, Watterson's pretty powerful. They have a Trayvon Offley, you know? Yeah. Uh, Part of the greatest yeah. graduating class in the history of Brockton High. <laughs> he was a beast. Medley on the option is going to have enough for first down and more up to the 22. That was good decision by the quarterback. Nobody was open. He saw he saw an opening right down the middle and he took it. And there you see on the replay. Melly drops back. He's no right way to there, go. He makes that Everybody's decision. covered. Does a smart play and just yes. tucks it under his arm and runs. And what actually happened was the the um, the rush, they jumped up because he's kind of they know he's short, short and he took advantage when he jumped up. The defensive man he committed. He ducked down. He ducked down. Did it again. Oh, he got leveled. Oh. Medley is in some pain at the 30-yard line. He got absolutely crushed by number 34, Ryan Nagel. And Medley wow. is limping over to the sideline. Watch it right there. No, that's yeah. 50. 50. Yeah, big dude. That would be Garrett Shackett. That 6'4", 215 Ooh. pounds. Well, you saw the replay. It looks like Navon should have had that. That was in his hand. Yeah, he should have had that. Medley gave up 50 pounds in that battle. Uh, Just think about something that weighs 50 pounds heavier than you landing on you full force. Don't want to think about it. Lateral. Meek Watterson lowering the shoulder, and he gets back up to the 20. It'll be third and eight. Another big third down situation. The reason it's big with 149 and counting in this second quarter is because the boxers need to score a touchdown. They need to score a touchdown. And you have the opportunity for a quick swing here. You score here, you get the ball back to open the second half. In the span of about 10 minutes of game time, you could realistically be up. Yeah, and, and you got the momentum going into halftime. Buck 20 left in the first half. Mm -hmm. 
Medley back to pass, he's in trouble. Able to cut to the inside and he runs out of bounds at the 11. Is that enough for a first down? It's close. No, they're gonna say he went out at the 13. That's a bad decision by Medley. He should have. Yeah, he, she could have went a little bit more. And the Boxers have yet to use a timeout. Let's see. Let's see where he actually goes out. You know, was, Gee, he, he looked like he was up to 12. Yeah. I mean, we, we were obstructed view, but based we on could, what we could yeah, see, see here. as far as where the. Um, Yard line is the ten. Watterson on the handoff. He'll have enough for a first down. Get in there and falling touchdown. into the end zone. Touchdown, Boxers! Yes. Amik Watterson, a 13-yard run, and the Boxers are on the board. See that? That's that'll give them some momentum. Make them feel good about themselves when they go into the locker room. And here you see right here. Hands it off to Watterson. And then uh, Watterson breaks Touch a couple right. tackles. Yeah. And then it's able to power his way into the end zone. There you see it right there. See, the defense froze for a second there. Uh, on When uh, the quarterback has the ball, Watterson came across and, like you said, just got it right up to the right side, and he was in. Good effort. The extra point is up and good. And again, Brockton Boxers needed that touchdown. Just a, It's a feel-good touchdown. First touchdown of the 2019 season. They've had a tough defensive battle here. They they fumbled the ball. They, they threw the ball for an interception. They got some tough calls by the referee, and they overcame it to tie this football game with only a minute left in the um, first half. Yes, and, and the junior medley, I mean, last last year's numbers, games played, he played in five games, had uh, nine completions for 98 yards. So he didn't do a whole lot in, as far as throwing the ball last year. But um, Coach Colombo got him ready for this year and uh, had faith in him and put him out there. Yeah, he really he liked what he saw in his quarterback and during the summer um, practices. And he said, this is going to be my man. Well, the Boxers waiting until one minute even left in the first half to get on the board. And now a squib kick fielded nicely by number eight, whose knee was on the ground, so he is down. That is Brady Madigan. Now by number eight, Brady Madigan. And Kevin McCarthy, the big senior 6'2", 230 pounds. Taking that one away for the boxers. First and ten for the Dragons at the 36 yard line. Festa back to pass. He's in trouble. Spins off the hit and kind of throws and it up. And Proudy come back and got it. What can this guy not do? <laughs> he made a great adjustment on the football. He did, because the way the ball was fluttering in the air, I thought it was going to be intercepted. He came back between it, 8 to 10 yards for that. Yeah, there was a couple of defenders yeah. close by. First down for the Dragons. Defense really has to hold here. Yes, they do. They really have to hold. Here's the replay. And watch, he drops back and it's kind of a, a duck. Ball's just fluttering all over the place. And then you're gonna see Prouty come into the screen. And he was on the left side of that field and he came cut across to the middle. Great awareness to where the football was uh, fluttering to. Yes. Cause it wasn't a great pass. As it you was said. not, no. Looked like a fluttering uh, duck. duck. Wounded duck. 36 seconds left for the Dragons. Yeah. 
Yeah, defense needs to get in there and get, put some pressure on this quarterback. Yeah, a sack right now would be real good. 36 seconds left in the, in the gown and a half. Should be enough for a first down for the Dragons. They're going to mark him a yard shy, third and one. Trips to the far side, Festa in the gun. Bobbling it. Now throwing over the middle. Oh! Oh! Number 15 for the boxers with the, the interception. That's Rodrigo Lima. Oh. He fumbled it on the end there, and they're going to rule it Duxbury ball. All he had to do was fall down. All he had to do was fall down. Well, there's two seconds left. Yeah. They, 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 but, yeah. Well, my question is now, does Duxbury get a fresh set of downs, or because they had possession at the end of the play and it was their ball to start with, is they that fourth and one? That's a nice play by number 15 for the boxes. Yeah, they get a fresh set of downs. That but was, they only uh, got two seconds remaining. Yeah, so that was Lima. Really that was Lima with the play. Is that Was that Lima's second? That was Rodrigo Lima's second, second interception. interception. Yep. Good job by Lima. Yeah. He went up there and got it, too. Yep. He's in great position. It's just that unfortunately, it, it was they came in and swatted it out of his hands. But all he had to do was go down. Once go down, let let the let the offense come in and run out the clock. But the adrenaline's running. It's tough. You know, well, he, you get the football. You want to, you know. He was able to pick up about 15, yeah, yeah. 18 yards. Yeah. So he was just trying to run. He had blockers in front of him. Yeah. And it just so happened that the. Um, the defender, defender came up from behind, him. yeah. So. Two ticks left on the clock in the first half, all knotted up at seven. The boxers will have possession to open the second half. Again, you, you know, well, we don't know if they're gonna pass. They, they, they might, I'm just down it, but they've got, a, they've got an exciting offense. I think they'll go for it. With yeah. two seconds, yeah. you have nothing to lose. Why not throw it up? Why not throw it up? Because he can reach the end zone. Yeah. Fest in the gun, no doubt looking for Prouty. In fact, he's going to hand it off to Landolfo. Flea flicker. Woo! Now Landolfo is going to get leveled by yeah. number six, Josiah Sorry. And that brings us to half and to do the half, excuse me, all knotted up at seven. Brian, your thoughts on a very defensive-minded first half. Well, you know what? The first half has not been pretty. It's been um, just turnover laced, turnover left and right by both teams, more by Brockton. And for Brockton to go into um, the locker room tied 7-7, consider themselves very fortunate. Exactly. That was not a pretty first half by the Brockton Boxers' offense. Um, but they, they looked much better in that about the last seven minutes of the football game. They moved the football. They showed what they could do as an offense, and if they can come out in the second half and do the same thing, and um, don't make any turnovers, they can't afford turnovers, they gotta protect the football, I think they can most likely come out of here with a win, but the Dragons are tough. Yes, they are. Turnovers, in fact, the story of the first half. The first five drives to the boxers, the first one a punt, then three straight turnovers, and then the touchdown. And real quick, I just wanna say that the boxing match between Medley and Prouty has been outstanding because both team, both players have been doing outstanding for their teams. And um, let's see Prouty who, who in wins. multiple positions. Mul Prouty in multiple positions. He's done everything but coach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's even doing a little bit of that. We're all knotted up at seven going into the halftime. Duxbury against Brockton in game one of the 2019 high school football season. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Rocky Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Duxbury Dragons and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson, Brian Madden. Guys, defensive battle and turnovers, the story of the first half. What do you think the story was in the locker rooms for both teams? Well, I take hold on to the football as far as the offense goes. You must hold on. To, you've got to protect the football. You, you can't just give it up and because and, if you give it up, you give um, Duxbury a chance to um, win this football game. You know what you can do out there, but protect the football. Well, I'll tell you, it's been, it's been clean as far as penalties. There haven't been any penalties um, um, in the game to this point. And um, like you said, you just protect the football and just continue to play spot. Yeah. Speaking of penalties, there's a flag down on the kickoff. The ball went out of bounds, so Duxbury penalized for that. And Brian, I think if you're Coach Peter Colombo of the Brockton Boxers, the strategy in the second half has got to be double team, triple team, quadruple team for Prouty. that matter, Will Prouty. Yeah, Prouty's a beast. He's been he's been outstanding. First and ten on the 35-yard line. Medley goes down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he fumbled the football. And what did I tell you? You got to protect the football. You got to protect the ball. He looks like he's going to get a little bit quicker with his hands. He wasn't sure if he wanted to hand that off to Isaiah Laguerre. And by the time that he decided to keep it himself, Laguerre was already trying to take off with it. Yeah. And I think early on in his first half, just get, give it to your your halfback and, and and let him do his thing. Because uh, you, you gotta feel, you gotta get a feel for that football. Well, the same formation that we saw for the majority of the second quarter by the boxers, five wideouts, and again, Medley holding onto it a little too long, but Isaiah Laguerre busting up ahead all the way to the 32-yard line. Yeah, it, it appeared that Laguerre had to actually physically pull the ball out of. Uh, <laughs> Out exactly. Of Let's see Medley's it. hands. You'll see it. And right you see him. He's there. Medley's yes. holding on to it. Give it to your running back and let him go. Boy, he's fast. He's fast. Medley back to pass. High pass to the end zone. It's intercepted at the four-yard line. And Medley was again crushed as he threw that ball. Jack Murphy on the interception for Duxbury, and we start the second half much the same way that. The first half. Uh, yeah, you, with you'll the see it on the replay. It's a little bit underthrown, but it seems like um, um, the, the receiver should have went up for it and fought fight for that football. Yeah, he should have. He had the height. He's got the height. And he he, he sh should have been able to just if, even if he wasn't able to come away with the ball, he should have been able to defend it. And he right. just kind of just I mean, stood there and, and let yeah, him just let, catch let him it. catch it and instead go run him over. I mean, knock him down, pass interference. So Do what? Something. Got to fight for that football. But I think that the the um, it was a will ill-advised pass because one thing it's very windy still, and the ball had a whole lot of height, and it was up there fluttering around. So that's the wind knocked the ball down. First and ten from the two-yard line for the Dragons. Duxbury wearing their visiting white jerseys, dark green numbers, silver trim. The boxers in their home black jerseys, maroon trim around the white numbers. And Prouty's back to, to um, quarterback again. Quarterback keeper. Boxers have also had trouble corralling Landolfo, the running back of the Duxbury Dragons. He's the player that was on the receiving end of that long pass from Festa for the lone touchdown so far for the Dragons. He's been having a great game. And he's got the ball now, bringing it up to the 17 yard line.
Crowdy on the fake QB sneak to the outside. It's good for a gain of a yard. It'll be second and nine. Yeah, he gave that to number 21, Landolfi. And good defense by Jose DePina. Make that stop. Prouty pass complete to the 30 yard line is number 19, Joe Cavallo. Yeah, that was a nice pass route. Joe came down and did like a little button hook, froze the um, defensive back, and he was open for the pass. And look, the, if you look here, that was his second option. His first option is number 11, Rainhout, right. and then he looked down and saw a, a, a better receiver. Who was uh, open. Who was open. But his first option was 11. Prouty in the gun, Landolfo to his left. Oh! Up is shanked, and now it's a foot race. Landolfo's gonna fall on it at the four yard line. Wow. And that'll bring up about a. Here's the replay. Know, 35 yards to go. You know, and I tell you, the boxers had a chance to get this football. Number five there kind of misjudged it because the ball's still open. And he just keeps running. Yeah. He never went down to get the ball. Go after the football. Just playing the body instead of the ball. Yeah. It's second and about 35 yards to go. <laughs> Prouty quarterback keeper, he found a hole momentarily. The boxers close that up fairly quickly. It's a gain of about five. It'll be third and 30. Down and Boxers need to get the football back so they can be in good field position. They cannot give up a first down here. They just need the ball. It's a lot of yards. It's a lot of yards. But we've seen everything this evening. Prouty back to pass. He's got to complete to number eight at the 20 yard line and oh. hit hard by. Number 25, no flags thrown. Stopped him right on his tracks. Johnny Horn, here, take this. Yes, oh, let's see loud it. hit. Take this back to your bench. Too much, Too much time. time. Too much time. Evades one tackle, Woo. and he's like, yeah, go sit down somewhere. I'm glad he hit him. He hit him high, but he hit him with the shoulder pad. Yeah. Good work by Johnny Horn. He lifted his head at the last moment. He, that could have been ugly for both players. Yes. That brings up a fourth and about 14. And in punting formation are the Dragons. High snap. Beautiful punt. And a beautiful kick. Uh, he touched him. Horn might have touched it. The boxers falling up, fighting for it. Uh, and Duxbury's got it. The punt, the punt returner needs to get away from the football when it starts. The wind he, was. He yeah. tripped over himself, too. Yeah. Trying to get out of the way. He waited too late. Here's the replay. Great kick by Prouty. I thought he was going to kick and then get down there and receive. See, he waited too to, late. To move. Yeah. yeah. And 19 should have had it. So These are the things that'll turnover. make that'll make the coach pull his hair out of his head. Well, at That's this rate, I'm sure Coach Colombo doesn't have much hair left to pull out after the now six turnovers in this game. Here's Landolfo lowering the shoulder. He's up to the 17-yard line. 6:58 to go in the third quarter. Prouty quarterback keeper right up the gut to the 10 yard line. Yeah, right now, Duxbury has a little momentum. Yeah. Brockton's it, a little shook. Yeah, a little shook up. But they better just collect themselves and get it together. Get back to that defensive stands they were making before in the first half. 
Randolfo right up the middle. He's going to fall into the end zone. It's a touchdown for the Dragons. Yeah, the offense just had too much momentum going for them. Boxes were, were shell-shocked. Yeah, and you're going to see right here. Watch this lane open up. Yeah. Nice, nice um, blocking by number 51. Opening up that lane. Randolph's second touchdown of the evening. One by air, one by ground. And not to be forgotten about, I'm sure what, that a Johnny Horn was still fired up from that defensive hit that he made on the other end on that third down play that led to the punt. He might have still been feeling that a little bit. Yeah. Extra point converted. It is 14 to seven, Duxbury on top of Brockton. Not the way the boxers wanted to start the second half with two turnovers. Yeah, I tell you, the coaches ain't going for that. It, they're gonna tell him, look, it, the, the ball's up in the air, it's blown all over the place. Just get away from the football. He he made the decision to get away too late. Too late. Way too late. But I'll tell you, the, the, um, one of the biggest differences we're seeing in this game is Duxbury made a bad snap, threw it back about 25 yards. Yeah. Threw it back about 25 yards. And, um, um, they were able to recover. They got some, some field position back and they punted it and it was able to uh, recover. And capitalize. And capitalize. So Duxbury to kick it off here. Watterson and Laguerre back to receive. Little trickery on the uh, on Duxbury, just a little squib kick in the air, trying to get it to. Well, did get it to one of the the linebackers, looked like, and uh, but he held on to the football. Brockton with good field position. Now they need to capitalize and bring this ball down, and and, and it's a chess game right now, and, and score a touchdown. Well, the defense has been. Pretty great for the for the boxers. It's been the special teams and the stuttering nice offense that have been the issue so far. Nice run there by Watterson. Able to move the sticks. Yeah, this, you see in the replay. Yeah, this op offense, this um, option is starting to click a little bit here. First and ten from the 49. The give to Watterson. Medley picks up his blocker. Watterson still on his feet, trying to turn on the Jets and blast past two last receivers. He's going to do it. Amik Watterson to the house for a boxer touchdown. And just like I said, that option starting to click a little bit, and that really wasn't an option. He just gave it to Watterson. He was he was um, coming across in motion, and and I tell you right now, it looks like Duxbury's getting a little little bit tired. Yeah. You know, look at missed tackles. He bro yeah, he broke about four tackles you right know. there. Five. Right there. And 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 that time he used um number two as a as a um as a shield and knocked out number nine. The extra point is up and good. 14 to 14. The key to that play, we talked about it in the first half. Devontae Medley had a little bit less hesitation giving that ball exactly. to the gut of Amik Watterson. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure the offense coordinator and the coaches told him, look, give it to your halfback That's right it. now. Just let He's it go. Bail, let it go. Once he touches it, let, let it go. go. Right. That's it. So big momentum swing right there. And what the boxers need to do is keep the momentum. Defense, this experienced defense needs to come out here and make something happen. Yes. They have the keys. They have the tools. They have the tools. They ha and they have the knowledge. And they have the coaching. And, and they have the plays because the plays have been outstanding. You know, the, the offensive coordinator has been doing a fantastic job calling, um, mixing it up, passing, and, and um, staying on the ground. 
And if they're going to go to the air, they just need to keep it low. Yeah. Don't throw it high. Yeah. Keep it low. Another pooch kick for the boxers. Handed nicely, I think that was Pruitt. And he is clotheslined at the 34-yard line. Wow. Good Proudy. They might have, he might have got away oh. with one right there. There's one way to slow him down. Yeah. Was that Proudy that did um? Yeah. Yeah, it was Proudy, yeah. And they're trying to keep it away from him with the squib kick. Right. But Proudy went and got it. He's going to, I mean, he's like a magnet to the ball. He's a football player. I that, I'm telling you. What did I say at the very yeah, beginning, very of, the beginning game? of the game? You at said the very, it. I talked to the coach and I said, who should we watch? And he said, watch zero. Watch Proudy. If he goes down, we're done. Yeah. And, he, and he, he's done everything. He's done everything. He's kicked. He's passed. He's received. He's blocked. He's done everything. I read it to the Duxbury coach at halftime, and he said if we could clone him 11 times, we'd go undefeated and win the championship. Yeah, yes. I believe it. You say full scholarship. Absolutely. I bet he plays baseball too. Be interested to know if he's a pitcher or an outfielder. I bet he's a pitcher. It's a nice tackle. It will be third and short for the Dragons. Dragons running game is looking pretty good in this second half. Well, you know what? They're, they're staying on the ground. You know, they're, they're focusing more on running. Um, in the first half, they were mixing it up. Passing and um, rushing, but uh, they're, they're staying on the ground more often now. In the second half, yes. And Dolfo up the middle, he's got enough for a first down. And, and I think part of the reason is the wind. Yes. I mean, the wind has died down. It was windier in the first half. It's not because our papers were blowing all over yes. the place. Yes. And, you know, it's not as windy as it was, but it's still windy. And uh, you don't know what's going on down the field as far as the wind. Screen pass complete, but stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of two. Number eight was the receiver, Brady Madigan. Yeah, nice play by the defense. Let me tell you, a Johnny Horn Defensive back has been doing outstanding. We've called his name, I don't know how many times this game. Quarterback keeper, and it's good for a gain of about three. It will be third and about seven. Yeah, this is a big third down for the boxers defense. They need to get the ball back. They need to they don't need to keep letting um, Duxbury drive down the field and keep pounding the football because that'll wear wear on your defense. And control the pace of the game. And control the pace of the game. Spread offense for the Dragons. Purdy in the gun. Purdy looking long. It's going to fall in complete excellent defensive play. Number 34 was there in coverage. Markendi Souffrant. Yeah, good coverage. A little scary that he didn't turn his yeah, head turn around. His head. <laughs> you know, he lucky he made a good play because, look, you can see right here on the replay, he does it. Finally, he turns around. He was, well, puts his head up in the air and sees where the football is. Well, I think what he was doing, he was watching the, the receiver. receiver. And when he saw the receiver's eyes go up, that's when he turned around and, and um, you know, deflected the, yeah, deflected the ball. But Johnny Horn. Back to receive. Yes. We've got a whistle. Yeah, he kneeled down. Yeah, big break right there for the boxes. You should see it on the replay. Bold see. strategy by Duxbury there. <laughs> That's one of the few mistakes no, no. Duxbury has made. You see right season. here, when he, when he goes down to get the ball, it's a bad snap, he that'll knees be, down. That'll be a turnover yeah, right on yeah. down. Right, right down. there, yeah. yeah. Knees down. Great replay coverage by Mike the Postman. And a good call by the umpire. Yeah. Well, after they blew that, that first punt that should have been a touchback. 
and and the umpire even argued with me down in the um down under the stands. I said we got it on replay that the ball was you know it was a touchback in the end zone. I'm glad I'm not the only one that gave it to the official at yeah. halftime. And 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 he's like uh, no, there's a new rule, a new rule that what it can be a, it can be over the line, it can touch the ground and still be uh, not a touchback. You see right here. What rule is that? The, the running game is working right now for um, the boxes. It's Watterson again. And uh, Coach Colombo knows that. Trips to the far side. Clean backfield for Medley. Watterson, the man in motion. Buzzing in my ear. Medley over the middle. Bobo, oh, yeah, but it's going to be pass interference. Yeah. Number 13 was the intended receiver, Trey Shula Hall. Good call right there. Yes. Now, is that 15 yards or is that a spot Let's foul? Let's see it right here. And he's all over him. He's all him. over him. Nice call by the referee. That's that same ref that called the. Um, yep. The play when the ball went to the end in, zone. In the end zone. And that's a 15 yarder. One thing guys I'm noticing about the field, the hash marks are a lot more spread out than they were last year. It's about two feet closer to the sidelines. Well, you can see the, the old hash, old hash marks, marks yep. and the new hash marks. Maybe that was the MIAA. Adjustment? Adjustment. Well, someone said they're reinventing football as yep. we speak. It's a flag, everybody and pointing at each other. It's gonna be against the boxers. The uh, football guru in the truck, um, Paul Mandeville, let us know that they're re reinventing the high school game. Well, I mean, yeah. if you look at the setup that Duxbury's got going on their sideline, they've got cameras, they're changing the defensive play call as the game is happening. They got a little cabana over there. Yeah, cabanas. They do. Yeah. Margaritas? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not, no margaritas, I'm kidding. I think behind that tent I see Gatorade. a... Gatorade. I think I see one of those blow-up jacuzzis <laughs> behind that, that little cabana over Massage there. Massage table? Yeah, a little bit of everything over there. All right, now we got to be careful. We might lose our director if we keep <laughs> pitching Duxbury's sideline. <laughs> Timeout called by the Boxers. 2-12 to go in the third quarter. All knotted up at 14 apiece. But with this timeout, this week, and, of course, the start of the National Football League season, guys, I'd love to get your predictions for the Sunday night football game. Patriots. They, they got on the football card. They got the Patriots by seven, but I, I think they'll they'll probably beat them by about three or four points. I, I you know first game, you know. Yeah, I say twenty eight. And and they're playing the Steelers, and then and, yeah, and then they'll push over. Yeah, twenty eight, twenty four. Okay. We're being told that that Vegas has set the odds at five and a half uh, yeah. for the spread. The football guru Paul Mandeville has inside track in Vegas. I think it's going to be la I think it's going to be the Pats by two touchdowns. Yeah. If you look at, I don't think. If, if they had Gronk, yeah. If they had Gronk, but if Pittsburgh had Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Good point. They've Good point. lost their two top offensive weapons. Yeah. Good point. And Juju Smith-Schuster is good in his own right, but he's not Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, but we all. Medley escapes the tackle. He's going to lose his footing. Here you see. Serious pressure. Pressure by number 50. You know, he looked like he was he was stable. And then he, he well, just he hit a little invisible wall. He saw number 34 coming at him, and he wasn't quite sure how he was going to juke on him. He also remembered that hit that 50 gave him earlier yeah. in, the, in the game. Artist of the man in motion, quarterback keeper. Medley's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long. Yeah, that play did not develop well for the boxes. 
and um, Duxbury was able to capitalize on the defense and, and shut it down with uh, 114 and counting here in the third quarter. One minute to go here in the third. <coughs> Brockton with about a third in 18. Trips to the near side. Watterson and Laguerre cut out to the far side. Medley back to pass. And it's going to be behind, uh, overthrown, intended for Navon Reed. <coughs> and that'll bring up a fourth and 18. Yeah, that was good defense. It looked like Thank defensive you, back kind of made the, uh, Navon go to the outside almost out of bounds and held him, held him up a little bit with his body. And uh, Navon, he needs to fight through that. He's a big kid. Yes. If you got to run over them, well, can't be polite out there. But I'm looking at the Duxbury team; they're pretty big kids. Th they are big. I, I noticed that at the very beginning. There's some big boys out there. I mean, you got some little ones too. Like what's that number? Twenty two. Twenty two. He's yep. little, but there's not many. They're, they're tall, good sized athletes. Brockton High going for it here on fourth and eighteen. Not confident in their place kicker, and it's going to fall incomplete. Intended for Trey Shula Hall. Turnover on downs. And you got to make that catch. Ball hit him right in the hands. And he had it. And he had it. At least for All a half a second. Yeah, just close your hands. Well, beat big defensive stands for the uh, Dragons of Duxbury to hold the boxes deep in their territory. Boxers are almost in the red zone, just outside. Oh, we got Mad Dog up here, Nene, in, in the booth. <laughs> Y'all don't know. <laughs> Next week for the Boxers, they travel all the way up to the North Shore to Lynn. face Lynn Classical at the Manning Bowl. That ought to be fun. I hope they keep it a 7 o'clock game. Otherwise, it's going to be interesting as far as trying to get there. He have to travel through Boston on a Friday afternoon. It's going to be tough. But we got the um, Emmy Award winning Newbie the Rito. Emmy Award winning. Winning. Oh, right. yeah, he'll, be, he'll be up there. Oh, he's up there. He's just going to stay there and wait for us. Clock at zero, we have reached the end of the third quarter. All knotted up at 14, but Brockton has been a little bit sloppy, guys, here in the second half. A couple of turnovers to start this second half. And here's the replay. Now, take Brockton's running defense has softened up a little bit. They need, they, need, they really need to tighten it up because, for the most part, that's what Duxbury's doing here in that third quarter is run the ball and they're softening up the defense of so Brockton needs to step up and really start to clamp down on that running game of uh, Duxbury. Yeah, because in the first half, it was probably 50-50, 60-40 passing um, to rush. Now it's probably 70-30 as far as rushing to pass. Yeah, the um, Duxbury's coaches have smartened up seeing that the boxers play good pass defense. So they've gone to the running attack and it's working keeping the uh, ball out of um, the box's hand, using some clock up. Now you got 12 minutes left. It's anybody's football game. That's right. Anybody's. That's right. The way this game's been going, it's anybody's football game. Whoever makes the least mistakes right now in the fourth quarter could be the deciding factor. That's right. So guys, let's take a long outlook at the schedule. We mentioned Lynn Classical next week, then home against Natick High, the second year of that matchup. Then you got a tough swing, Everett, and Severian both on the road. But the interesting thing is those games normally would have been CM, BC High, and Severian in no particular order. Yes. Then you got Durfee and New Bedford and Bridgewater Random away on Thanksgiving. So it's interesting with the no divisions and you gotta go by the power rankings of max preps to make the playoffs. 
hearing that schedule, do you think there's there's an outside chance that Brockton sneaks into that top 20? Sure. I think they have a chance. Yeah. If they can cut back on the um, turnovers, on the turnovers, because you know they're playing well, offensively and defense. Well, Pruitt lost the ball, got it back, was tackled, broke that tackle, spun off another hit, and wow. made his way across the 50. Yeah, Proudy man, he's no joke. He, he was stopped in, in, yeah. in the um, backfield. Backfield, yeah. And um, was able to break a couple tackles and get a first down, gain about 15 yards. Again, Brockton's got to shore up on his uh, run defense. Tackled immediately, and it's a gain of about two, second and eight. Cousin over there tearing up on the, uh, doing the backflips. <laughs> That's your cousin? Yeah. Party hit again, and this time he's going to be wrapped up for the sack. It'll be third and about 14 for the Dragons. That was a big play by the boxes. They need to hold here. Put the pressure on, and the why he's in the pocket. Didn't give them a chance to get out of that pocket, and that's what they have to do here on the third down. They're gonna have to really hold here. Just make the tackle. Don't go after the football. Make the tackle. Make a stop. And get their offense back on the field. Spread defense for the boxers. There we go. Nice. Interesting play call for third and 14 when you've had success in the air. Be fourth and 11. Fourth down and one. Well, they're not gonna take a chance, but. No, I, I think that they, it was all about position. They want to get the ball in the middle of the field. Proudy to be able to make the kick. Try and keep the ball away from a Johnny. And Brock has got to be careful because the punter, he can he can fake the punt, but look, look at that. And he is probably going to throw it, and he's got his man sliding down, and that is a complete pass. You called for it. For a called it. Berry first down. I called it. <laughs> called it right just before he uh, yeah. made that I mean, pass. It, it, it was they were so close to a first down, like you said, the where the position of the, the ball was. Why not try? If, if yep. they fail, they're still in the Brockton's in the middle of the football field. Brady Madigan on that reception for the Dragons. Randolph will spun down. It's a gain of about two. Nice stick there by uh, Navon Reed. Eight and a half to go now in the fourth quarter. Oh, nice. What a good defensive stick for the boxers. Number six with the tackle on the line of scrimmage, Josiah Asari. Now one, one key factor with this drive for Dutchbury, they're using clock and they're keeping the ball out of the uh, boxers' offensive hands. That's a key right there. This clock's been running. They've had the ball for a while. Yes, they have. But a key stop, third and six. Boxers gotta play smart. Going zone defense again. The boxers look a little scrambly. Now Prouty looking long and tipped, almost intercepted. 
was intercepted. It was tipped by a horn and Fortes almost grabbed it. Great coverage. Yes, here you see it on the replay. And again, the wind. The ball's fluttering around. And Horn almost had that. Upset. I hope he didn't hurt his hand when he punched the ground. Fourth and six, and they're going. All right, key oh. stop right here. Yep. Duxbury coaches have a lot of faith in their quarterback and their offense. Incomplete pass, it'll be a turnover on downs. It's a big stop for the Brockton defense. And actually, it looks like that receiver really had a chance to catch that football. Yeah, I mean, it was good coverage, but it looks like the receiver may maybe should have had it. Yeah, Prudente, um, it went right through his hands. And you're gonna make that catch because yeah. the defender was, was draping on him. He had him around the waist. Right. But he yeah, was, you gotta make that was, catch. You know. It, it was there. It was there. It was not, no, nothing to bother him up top. Box has got to protect the football and drive down the field with 7.30 on the clock. First and 10 boxers, Watterson to Medley's left. Medley screen pass, completes to Navon Reed, trying to get up field. He does just that, hold on to the ball. And he's got a pile pushing him towards the 50. Still on his feet, finally brought down at the 40. Nine yard line. And you're exactly right. He's got to tuck that football away. Here, here you see it right here. Watch how he holds the ball right there when he transfers hands. But then he gets it gets it in tight to his body and, and kind of protects it. Yeah. And then he picks up the half the offensive line was pushing him there. But the, the yeah. way this game's been going with, uh, with the fumbles Turnovers. and everything, you, know, you hold your breath. That's it. When our guys have the football and they're running with it. First and 10, Boxers. Five wideouts, clean backfield for Devontae Medley. Waterson, the man in motion, flags thrown. It's gonna be a false start against the Brockton Boxers. So you, you, you want them to um, try and get 15, 20 yards. But you know what, I'm good with 12 yards and you holding the ball with both hands and powering your way through and get a first down. And at this point for the boxers, you've got to worry about wasting time off the clock as well as gaining yards at the same time. Yes. And yes. protecting that football. Yeah, because you don't want to give the ball back to Duxbury and too early. No. That's the name of the game. Protect yep. the football. The game you've had so far, six turnovers. That's you it. cannot afford one right here. You can't. You got a tie football game. You don't want to give it to them. Watterson, the man in motion. Medley back to pass, he's in trouble, scrambling out, evades two linemen. Now Medley gonna tuck it in, keeping himself across the 50 to the 44 yard line, Devonte Medley. And that will bring up uh, second and eight, uh, two. And I'll tell you, the, the, the um, offense got away with one. Yeah, Watch on the replay, yeah, yeah. the push in the back. The yes. push in the back, you see right it, here. Right seven there, seven, yes. push in the back. I think. And, and he held up his hands. If you could wind that back, he held up his hands and, and kind of thanked right. the good I, I, Lord. I think the only reason why the ref didn't throw it because it wasn't a blatant push. It was a push. It was a push in the back. Yeah, but it, it wasn't word. blatant. After the missed calls, calls they made yes. on Brockton, yeah, they, owe us they, one. they owed us one or two. Still owed us another one. Medley going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Third and four. You got to give that football up on the option, give it to your halfback. They can't. You got Watterson charging right. ahead on your left. You just gotta make that simple pitch. You gotta make the pitch. You can't afford to get cream. Well, third and four. This is a crucial play right here. Definitely Just crucial. over five minutes remaining in the game. We need a first down. Clean backfield, Medley in the gun. Five wideouts. Isaiah Laguerre now the man in motion, quarterback keeper, and Medley is stopped short. Do we go for it? Does he go for it? You have to. Yeah. Under five minutes to go. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Damn, did they move and that was the hesitation back? again. Isaiah Laguerre didn't know if Medley wanted to hand it off to him or keep it himself. Well, if he had handed it off, 34 is right there. right there. He yeah. is right there. I think he made the right choice then. Because it would have been a loss of loss of down. And that I mean, just tells me they're uh, keying on they're keying on uh, Waterford. They got the, one of the defenders just staying right with them. Timeout mm -hmm. called by Brockton. 4:14 to go in the fourth quarter. Fourth and two. All knotted up at 14. And I think it's a good timeout by Coach Colombo to um, make sure that they have the right play in. Everybody's on the same page, and you know, get prepared, be smart, do your job. Right, because it's fourth down. It's fourth down. Four minutes left in the game, and you're tied up. Like you said, you want everybody on the same page. Now the key to this fourth down play is execution. If the boxers can execute, Nope, and not just the uh, running back and the quarterback, but the blocking assignment. Yes, the offensive line. Making the correct blocks, opening up a hole for, for if it's a running play, and protecting the quarterback if it's a passing play. Wood's starting to pick up here once again. And under the circumstances, which is, like you said, the wind picking up, hopefully they keep it on the ground and um, able to uh, pick up that first down. And, and, and no, no motion penalties. No. You have to execute. Well, what's interesting, guys, the boxers have attempted exactly one halfback run directly up the middle. That was the boxers' second touchdown. Yes. Medley in the gun. Laguerre, the man in motion. He gets the handoff and trying to turn the corner. He's tripped up depending on the spot. It looks like looks he's like going to be short. Down. Depends on the spot. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. They're going to have to measure. And they are calling for the sticks. That is right on the line. Yeah. We need a measurement. Here you're going to see right here. Hands it off. It's going to get to the 47. And he I don't like, like the he, spot. He looked like he looked like he's right on the line. I don't like the spot. Well, they they spotted him. I think exactly where we, he landed, yeah, right I, where I his right so. elbow I think, landed. I, I think so. It's gonna be short. So Duxbury takes over with four minutes and six seconds to go. Let, let's Brockton. see where he comes down. Look where he comes down. His elbow right there. And that they actually gave him an extra few inches on the spot. I, I don't know. I don't like the spot. I think it should have been another six inches. I, I just don't like that spot. Well, the, the, it's it's null and void now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's done with. Man. Brock boxes just can't catch a break. Now the defense, this experienced defense needs to make something happen and, and, and hold this, maybe hold this offense for and out. So first and 10 for the Dragons, 406 to go. No bigger drive defensively than this for the Brockton boxers. Illegal substitution on Illegal substitution on the Dragons, so that'll back him up. Another five yards. That's a good start for Brockton. Yes. Another whistle. 
Well, Rocket is rocking the house, and they walk it all, all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. <laughs> We've got a conference of zebras in the backfield. Yeah, what are they up to? I don't see any flags on the field. Are they going to give them their five yards back? Yeah. Coach exactly. Colombo is out on the what field trying to line to? up his defense, and the referee <laughs> is having a pretty animated conversation with Peter Colombo. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we, we took five yards already by mistake. They're bringing it back one yard. And after all that, we're underway. First and 15 for the Dragons. Blitz. Prouty back to pass. Over the middle. Oh! Yeah, number 12, Devin Fortes looking for the end zone. He's going to spin off a hit, and he's going to be stopped at the 11-yard line. Devin Fortes, the biggest play defensively of the game right there. And let me tell you something. He saw that from the beginning. Yes. He was in position. He was watching the quarterback. He was in, and you're going to see it right here. Watch the pressure. No, watch. Yeah, I told you they blitzed. And you see Devin just come up, cut the, cut the play, grab the ball, and he's off to the races. Now, I tell you, I'm surprised Duxbury called a pass play on that first down because their bread and butter in the second half have been running. And they paid the price. All right, so now you got a short field. you got to waste as much of the next three minutes and 50 seconds off the clock as and, possible. And protect the football. And protect the football. That's, that's you, the key right and there. And you know what? If you get down there and you're not able to punch it in for a touchdown, kick the field goal. The punters, I mean, the kicker's been doing a great job, but you can't be losing yards. All right. Is that fly again? Yeah, Busted that's in that's my fly, ear. you know. <laughs> don't isn't the point of coming to football games to get excited? excited? Yes, and yellow. And don't they Put have the, the ability to turn our, yeah. our levels down? Yes. Just ignore the director. <laughs> <laughs> the handoff to Watterson, still on his feet to the ten. Watterson is very talented at breaking tackles. Yes, he is. And, and keeping his balance. Trevor, have them move. So it'll be third and about a long eight. We'll call it nine for the boxers. Big third down right here. Good work, Seamus. No problem. Medley to pass. Now he's gonna keep it himself, trying to get to the inside corner. Diving the end zone, touchdown, boxers! That's it, that's way to do it. Fantastic, great run, now, great play. That was a great run and a great awareness by the quarterback. He saw the pylon, he, pushed, he took his hand, you'll see the replay, and gets it right over the pylon for a touchdown. Great, great decision right there, nobody open. So he takes it right, and you can see right here, stretches right over the pylon for well, a touchdown. We, we didn't see him stretch over the pylon. Down in front. But that's what we did. We saw it on the actual play, how he put his arms out, stretched right over the pylon, very aware where he was at to get that touchdown with the defender coming in at him. The timeout boxers. Rodrigo Lima coming onto the field. It looks like they didn't have enough players 
for the extra point attempt. This is a very important extra point. Boxers need to make it. There's still a lot of football left. Two yes. minutes, nine seconds with this um, Duxbury offense. High snap, the kick is up, and the kick is good. The first time all game, Brockton has the lead with two minutes to go, and 21 to 14. If Medley chose a point to turn it on, that yes. was the, the time to do it. Yeah. He's had an outstanding game. I mean, he's had a couple of turnovers, but he's had an outstanding game when, for, yeah. all, for all kinds of purposes. When, when he's need to, to make the big play, here in this second half, he made the big play. Again, having a mobile quarterback gives you a few more options and it gives the defensive team fits. They're not sure what to do. Open it right up for him to take it in for the touchdown. You need a good kickoff here. And the kickoff team needs to cover all their lanes, little squib kick. And just falling on it. Yeah, they're, the they're, they're, they want their offense back on the field because they, they know they have faith in their offense. And this experienced Brockton defense needs to make another big stop. The last yeah. time they, all, they was out on the field was a big interception to uh, set up the uh, winning touchdown. Yeah, and they gave up a couple of big plays. And Brockton needs to just, just maintain, keep they, them in front. Yeah, maintain your composure. You give still got, play, yeah. Give them small plays, five yards here, three yards there. Run out the clock. Run out the clock. Well, with this little break of the action, we want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from Rocky Marciano Stadium for game one of the 2019 season. At the helm, the fly in the air. Paul Vandeville. Graphics, audio replay. Mike, the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton as Duxbury just threw an incomplete pass, second and 10. On camera, we have Trevor Simmons. And up in the booth, big game, Miles Jackson. Seamus, Brian Madden. No, 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 no. stop it, stop, stop. it. Be mad. Be mad. I like it. And myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. And we'll be right back at it next week at Lynn Classical for game two. It's Festa getting knocked into in the backfield, staying on his feet. It's going to oh, turn out to be a gain of about three. That was Landolfo on the reception. And the referee's letting him play because he waited to, he was out of bounds when he, yeah. was, when he pushed him. Thank God he lightly pushed him. Yeah. Because if he would have been a, a real shove. Yeah, because he's, I mean, he's out. out of bounds. Right there, no yeah. There's no, no need. need he's him. out. He's out of bounds. Yeah, that's a Johnny Horn on that little late push. It's second and five. Well, third and five, rather. Well, Big third down here for the boxers. Festa back to pass. Well, Johnny gets a mulligan on that because he's played so well today. We'll give him a, yeah, we'll give give him a, a mulligan. free pass. Yeah. Free pass, yeah. Incomplete to Prouty brings up a fourth and five. You're going to go for it. So the man to watch, number zero, Will Prouty on the near sideline. There are four wide receivers, Landolfo to Festa's left. And he, he, you know it's gonna go to him. Festa looking for it, gonna keep it himself. He's run into and stopped short of the first down. Brockton's gonna... It'll depend on the spot. Now because they blew the whistle at about when he was at the oh, 40. He's, he's definitely, he's a yard short. Yeah. He's gotta be a yard short. Yeah, when they blew the whistle, that's where the ball should be Should spotted. be. Hometown spot. Should be. 
<laughs> when the when the when the when Landolfo stood up, he put the ball on the forty yard line. That's a yard short. Wait, right, well, here, here we see, go. Here we go. The whistle Let's look was at the blown. Replay that, here. If the whistle was blown right about, you, sh you gotta blow the right, whistle right, right there. That's there. when they blew it. Even though he fell and he's over. down at the forty. Yeah, yeah. That was a good call and a good spot. Let me tell you something, gentlemen. Mad Dog, Miles, it's good to be back. Good to have you, man. It's fun. And it couldn't have been a better football game. Couldn't have been a come back. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a full yard short here. Wait for it. Not even close. Turnover, first down, Boxers. The defense stands up. Again. This is an experienced Brockton defense. They carried the team last year. Now they got a year under their, another year under their belt. They should really be a factor in the 2019 season. If you're Festa there, when you stand up, you gotta put the ball down right on the first down marker. He, his mistake there was he put the ball on the 40 yard line. And the first down marker is at the 39. So Brockton takes over a buck 41 to go. And, and again, when that tackle was in progress, it stalled right at the 40. Whistle blew, and then he fell over to the 39, but it was too late. Whistle was blown. Now, still, Brockton has to be, has to protect the football. Still a minute and 41 seconds left in this That's football it. game. Time out called by Brockton. Uh, there's, a, there's a flag. Possibly delay of game. Yeah. Referee threw a flag, so a delay of game. And the weather held up. Yep. No rain. Great night for football. I mean, the temperature's comfortable. Some may find it chilly. I see some blankets in the um, stands. This is beach weather. Yeah. Amik Watterson heading for the Touchdown. end zone. Amik Watterson. Touchdown. The explanation point on a boxer's victory. A That's minute and 29 seconds to go, and Amik Watterson has just put the nail in the coffin of a very spirited Duxbury Dragons effort. You, yes. took the, you took the words right out of my mouth. The nail was just Putting shut the on the coffin. Here you see the handoff. Great blocking. Great. Look at the blocking downfield. Yeah. Look at the blocking. Fantastic. Gave him a nice little fence to run behind, untouched, into the end zone. For those keeping score at home, that's two halfback runs up the gut for the boxers this entire game. Two touchdowns. And, and I tell you, on the replay, you saw the quarterback looked like he didn't want to give the ball up to his halfback. He kind of. Again. Again. Yeah. Again. <laughs> and now here's a fake PAT attempt. Flag thrown. It's going to be short, but we'll wait on the flag. As a great broadcaster once said, well, that escalated quickly. Yeah, I'll tell you, despite the wide margin of victory. This game played a lot closer a lot. than the score shows. Exactly. And Brockton you know. didn't hold the lead until there were two minutes left. Exactly. And again, with Brockton's running attack, kind of softened up. I, I could tell earlier that Duxbury team was getting a little winded with the Brockton's running attack. And it, it just one mistake and another touchdown has been put on the board with less than two minutes to go. The penalty declined by Duxbury, so the two-point conversion attempt, no good. 27 to 14 with a minute 29 seconds to go.
Pooch kick again and brought down at the 26 yard line. Oh, we got Matty Nelson up here spitting in the booth. <laughs> He's still a big kid at heart. <laughs> that song, All I Do Is Win by DJ Khaled, is the second song I ever learned how to rap. The first, of course, being Yeah by Usher. Well, I'll tell you, Brockton um, really escaped with one today because yeah. as, as many, turnover, many turnovers as they had, as um, bad as they played at some points, they played just as good on the other end. And they stood up when they needed to at the end of the game. First game was up and down, both, you know, all through the whole turnovers on both sides. They shorted it up a little bit more in the third quarter, and then they solidified the, the victory in the fourth quarter. Great job by Brockton. Yeah, definitely great job. And even though Brockton has a lot of weapons, I have to give a, a kudos out to the offensive line because this is a new offensive line Brockton is playing with. Yeah. Uh, the whole yep, offensive yep. line graduated Into that. the air. Ooh, looks like a good catch. They, they, they all graduated last year. And this new offensive line did a pretty good job of making the right blocks, and, um, especially in the running attack and the option. Yes. They, they did a pretty good job. Well, the offense and the coaches, I'm sure, breathing a sigh of relief that the defense performed in the manner that they did tonight because, as you mentioned, all of those turnovers could have led to a lot of Duxbury points. That's right, and the defense stood up. Um, every time, yeah, the you know, to, to, to um, hold them to only 14 points with um, six turnovers yeah. is awesome, fantastic. Great job. Kudos to them. And, and just like Coach Colombo said earlier before the season started, he's depending on his defense to, to lead these boxes. Uh, and, and, and they came through, like you said, Brian, when they had to because there were so many turnovers by the offense. Defense didn't um, panic. They kept their poise out there on the, on the ball field with this very exciting um, and dangerous Duxbury team. And there was numerous times when Duxbury was either in the red zone, just outside of the red zone, threatening to score, and the boxers, you know, was able to stand pat and hold him back. One minute to go in this one. Festa is sacked. 58 again. He's been having a great game. Yeah, he's a beast. I've called his name numerous times, Gio Brown. Gio Brown's a beast. He just shed, shed it off his block at about the same time and just took the quarterback down with almost with just one arm. And I just want to really uh, speak on oh, here see you see right the replay. Here. Just, just watch how he manhandles. Yeah, he took him to force his way that. through there. Look at one arm, just takes him down. But um, awesome play by the whole team. Medley, Watterson, um, Akeem Wad Wanadi, Navon Reed, Devin Forts, Trey Kuala, McGarry, Lima, Sufant, Bailey, Horn, all of them. Great job. Festa back to pass. He's hit again and brought down, and this one's going to fall in the middle of nowhere. And that one hurt. Yeah, not to mention Gino Brown also and uh, Jose DePina and the whole team. Fantastic job by everybody. 38 seconds to go. 27-14 the score. Brockton on top. Festa back to pass over the middle and incomplete intended for Ryan Prudent. Folks, we want to remind you to look around and check your belongings. 
Make sure you don't leave anything behind, especially the trash. Take all your trash with you and find a receptacle to throw your trash away. So the boxers will move to 1 and 0 on the young season. <laughs> and give Duxbury, who went 12 and 1 last season, their first loss of the season. But still a lot of things to work on in practice. Yes. Number 1, how to handle the ball. Football. Yes. Protect the ball. Protect the ball. Devontae Medley takes a knee, and that will do it. 27 to 14 is your final score. So Brockton with some good momentum going into next week at Lynn. It'll be interesting to see how they balance that long bus ride up to the North Shore. That game also starts at five o'clock. Make sure you are here. And then they're back home against Natick at five o'clock in two weeks from tonight. Who are the players in the game? Well, I tell you, this is a big, big test early on in the season for this boxer team. Like you said, Brian, this was a 12 and one team from last two, year. And um, they met the challenge. And they had, they made some mistakes, Morse. but they met the challenge. The they didn't lose their cool. The and they came out of here with a big, first win of the 2019 season. Well, players of the game, Amik Watterson, Devin He's Fortes. I don't think there's any arguments here. Fortes came up with that huge interception at the end. And Amik Watterson had those two big touchdowns. And I, I got to give it to um, Medley as well. Devontae Medley, excellent job. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, 27-14, your final score. Brockton over Duxbury. We'll see you next game. Don't forget, we'll be here in two weeks.